strikes, will your insurance pay off? Tonight, a Channel 7 News I-Team investigation into the good neighbor people. Live, local, late breaking. Channel 7 News at 6 starts now. State Farm is the largest insurance company in the nation. It carries more than six million policies in California alone. But tonight, there are some very serious allegations against the company that calls itself a good neighbor. The Channel 7 I team brings you the results of a joint investigation with KGO Radio into the way State Farm does business. And I team reporter Dan Noyes is here now with the results of that investigation. Dan. Dan Terrell and several former State Farm employees are coming forward to say the company cheats and lies to some of its customers, that it even forges their signatures. Rod and Krista Taylor say they ordered complete homeowners coverage from State Farm years before the Northridge earthquake hit. It sounded like the bones of the earth were breaking, you know, and, and they, were, they were made of stone, but you could just sort of crunch, crunch, you could hear that, and of course the rumble. It's been more than three years, and they still haven't fixed most of the damage to their Sherman Oaks home. The Taylors have been battling State Farm because the company claims the couple had no quake protection. The proof? this order for insurance that waives the earthquake coverage. Rod Taylor says he saw it for the first time when he met with State Farm's attorneys. I said, do you recognize this signature? I said, no. And it was a, a complete forgery on the original insurance uh, order. And, uh, you know, that really was something obviously somebody did to, to cover themselves. Take a look for yourself. Here is the signature on the State Farm document. This is Rod Taylor's signature. It's, it's not Rod Taylor's signature, we believe, but we don't know who signed it. Well, what could it have been someone from State Farm? It's conceivable. Uh, we just don't know the answer. A State Farm attorney says the apparent forgery misses the point, that Rod Taylor chose not to buy earthquake coverage. The Hollywood scriptwriter has a business manager who did receive this statement from State Farm before Northridge warning, our records indicate that you have not purchased earthquake coverage. The Taylors say they never saw or heard the warning. State Farm denies any wrongdoing. Still, the company has agreed to pay the couple a multi-million dollar settlement, even though their home suffered less than $600,000 damage. State Farm has been committing fraud, forgery, and fabrication of evidence on a company-wide basis, not just with regard to the Taylors. State Farm has been dealing with the issue of forgeries for years. Michelle Giacobella says she never signed this form rejecting earthquake coverage. This is her real signature. This is the signature on William Adams' state form policy, not how he normally signs his name. The company denies that the Giacobellas and Adams signatures are forgeries, but the overall issue is enough of a problem that State Farm trains its managers to try and catch forgeries by its own agents. It was so pervasive that early on in my career I had been sent to a um, handwriting school and um, we were to meet with these experts and learn how to compare signatures. And this former employee, Amy Zuniga, says State Farm has forged the signatures of its customers many times. The aim? To make it look like some earthquake victims had no quake insurance, so State Farm could turn down their claims. In the declaration filed in state court, Zuniga also says that her bosses told her never to use the word forgery and to not admit that forgeries happen unless compelled to do so by court order. Well, she's wrong about that, and uh, she was wrong about many other things in those declarations as well. She's wrong about those forgeries? Yes. Why would she lie, or why would she be mistaken? One of the great mysteries is uh, why Amy Zuniga has said the things she said. An attorney hired by State Farm complains that he hasn't had a chance to question Amy Zuniga. Her spokesman tells us she's trying to put the controversy behind her, and that she wouldn't be available to speak with us either. But other former State Farm employees support what Zuniga said, that forgeries are a common problem at the company. It's prevalent to the point that within the company, I mean, it's a joke. Um, you know, everybody, they know that they can see this. Howard Mattis says his problem with State Farm was not forgery, it was retaliation. During the Oakland Hills fire, he and his family had to abandon their home, their cars, their pets. And in the months that followed, Mattis says he had little time to help his family heal emotionally. He was too busy correcting the mistakes of State Farm adjusters. This is the amount of paperwork I had to generate. These are three binders of correspondence. Um, you can see uh, 
this is all the correspondence. I can see this realm of paper over here. Essentially, I was drowned in paperwork. Then, after two years of haggling, Mattis had enough. He went on Channel 7 News to complain about how slowly State Farm was handling his claim. What I did is I wrote a letter to State Farm showing the increase to lumber prices. I showed them some uh, newspaper articles. And so when I gave it to State Farm, uh, they said uh, that wasn't sufficient information and that what they needed to do is to reevaluate my whole claim. Mattis believes State Farm retaliated for that appearance. The very next day, the company stopped payment on a large check for him, and he fired off this letter of complaint. It took Mattis another year to get his entire claim settled. When someone has gone through a loss like this, why does our insurance company, who claims to be a good neighbor, try to make it so difficult to collect? State Farm says that's not the way they do business, and that they stopped the check to Mattis because of a computational error. State Farm is not the only company accused of dragging out the claims process, but it is the first to be accused so publicly by some of its former employees of endangering the lives of its customers for the sake of the bottom line. We knew that we were leaving people in unsafe homes because they trusted State Farm. Ina DeLong is now an insurance consumer's advocate. She says she quit State Farm after the Loma Prieta earthquake because the company knowingly low-balled claims from customers such as Bill Hegner. They sent a guy out here who was brand new. A State Farm adjuster decided Hegner's home in Scotts Valley suffered only $42,000 worth of cosmetic damage from Loma Prieta. So after about six months, <laughs> I could, there's a wall there. I could sit against this wall and look down a hallway that runs the length of the house. And one wall went like this, and one wall went like that. So Hegner began hounding State Farm to pay for structural repairs. The process took nearly two years. I had nine different adjusters over here during the course of this. Why is that? I mean, the team... Every time I called up to raise hell with somebody, it was somebody new. They don't know what's going on. You got to sit down with your file. Start all over again. Start from scratch. Well, what's the problem? What's the matter? What's this? What's that? Who are you? Nobody knows... Nobody knew anything. The company finally increased the amount of payment from $42,000 to $151,000. Some people that um, didn't squeak or um, complain walked away with, with a lot less than they were entitled to. Jim Alberg is a former State Farm claim supervisor who lost a constructive wrongful discharge lawsuit he brought against the company this year. Alberg says customers there are being shortchanged because State Farm pushes its employees to reduce the average amount of money paid per claim. Nobody comes out and says, um, do you will lowball a claim, but the system is set up such that um, you're rewarded for um, lowballing a claim and uh, punished for not. And that infuriates Auburn's father, the former State Farm Vice President for Claims. To spread the attitude that uh, uh, claims can make the company profitable by paying less on claims if that amount is improper, then I, I think that not only is morally wrong, but it could be illegal. We wanted to address all these questions directly to the people in power at State Farm's offices in Bloomington, Illinois. The Channel 7 I team flew to the company's headquarters to interview a high-level State Farm official, and we were assured that someone would be made available. But once we got here, the story changed. We returned to the Bay Area without the interview. Days later, a tape arrived in the mail. On it, State Farm President and CEO Ed Rust denies he urges his employees to unfairly reduce the amount of claims paid out. If anyone has ever believed that claims has a mission to create profit at the expense of proper claim handling, and that impression hasn't been corrected, it is now. now. The accusations do not end with forgery and trying to pay customers less than they deserve. Tomorrow on Channel 7 News at 6, we'll take an inside look at how State Farm battles the bad faith lawsuits they face each year. And you can hear more of our investigation with Susan Kennedy and her Spotlight 810 reports on KGO Radio tomorrow morning at 6.15 and at 8.15. And if you have an idea for our next investigation, call us toll-free at 1-888-40-I-TEAM, 24 hours a day. Dan Farrell. Mm. You can sure see the differences on those signatures. Boy. Absolutely. Now, has State Farm left Amy Zuniga alone after she made these allegations about the forgeries? No, they didn't. I mean, even though there wasn't a lawsuit pending, they wanted right. to depose her. And she was really worried about what trouble she might be getting into. Mm -hmm. Call it a coincidence or not, but after we began asking some questions, State Farm dropped the idea of deposing her, and so they left her alone. Oh, yeah. Look forward okay. to tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot, Dan. Well, Live, local, 
late breaking. Channel 7 News at 6 starts now. Still coming up tonight on Channel 7 News, part two of our Channel 7 News I-Team investigation into State Farm Insurance. Our story tonight will leave you wondering how State Farm can be a good neighbor when one of its employees can't even recognize her own name. I'm Michael. Delivered in just a few weeks. Isn't that great? We got so many calls Wonderful. last night after we did that yeah. report. Well, stay with us. Coming up next, Dan Noyes and the Channel 7 I team with part two of an investigation into a major insurance company, maybe yours. We investigate a major insurance company accused of ordering its employees to lie under oath. There are some disturbing allegations tonight about State Farm, the largest insurance provider in California and the entire nation. Now, some former employees say that State Farm instructed them to lie under oath to protect the company from lawsuits brought by unsatisfied customers. Now, our Dan Noyes is here now with part two of his joint investigation by the Channel 7 I team and KGO Radio into the way State Farm does business, Dan. Now, Dan Terrell, we showed you last night on this program how State Farm is being accused of cheating and lying to some of its customers, of even forging their signatures on important insurance documents. Well, tonight we take an inside look at how State Farm handles such complaints and how the company battles the bad faith lawsuits they face each year. Several former State Farm employees tell us the company put them in a very difficult position. Raise your right hand to be sworn, please. If you do solemnly swear the testimony you may give in this deposition shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I hope you got it. I do. Thank you. They say they had to break an oath to tell the truth because State Farm ordered them to lie. Bam, all of a sudden the lie comes in, the fabrication comes in, the, the distortion of the truth comes in, or however you want to put it, it's all a lie. Bill Diaz worked at State Farm for nine years as a senior structural appraiser. He says he got fired last year after refusing to lie in a deposition. The company claims it let him go for incompetence. As part of her job at State Farm, Amy Zuniga used to prepare witnesses for the company. In this sworn declaration filed in state court, Zuniga says it's State Farm policy to train employees to give up as little information as possible at deposition and not to answer a question with a yes or no because you need wiggle room to change the answer at a later time. An attorney hired by State Farm denies the company trained its employees to be evasive witnesses. My history with State Farm is that witnesses are told to tell the truth, to listen to the question and answer. And answer. And answer. Yes, sir. Is that your signature at the bottom of the letter? But watch the performance of State Farm claim specialist Tony Hotzel during a deposition last year as part of a bad faith lawsuit. I don't know. It might or might not be. Does it resemble your signature? Oh, goodness. Um, For more than 15 minutes, she struggles to identify the signature on a memo she apparently wrote. I write my name a lot of different ways. I don't know if it can resemble it or not. The plaintiff's attorney presses Hotzel repeatedly to admit this is her signature. Now your finger is on what looks to me like the words Tony Hotzel. Does it look to you like the words Tony Hotzel? No. Looks more like hotel in the last word. I don't know. Again, it's her own name. And she said, well, it kind of looks like hotel. Well, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> if it wasn't so serious. We showed the Hutzel deposition obtained by KGO Radio to Richard Alberg, a former high-level executive at State Farm. He was especially struck by this section, where the plaintiff's attorney plays a recording of a telephone conversation Tony Hutzel made. Can I have your name again, please? Sure, it's Jeffrey Rose. Hello, Mrs. Tony Hutzel, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hutzel, did you hear the female voice? on that tape recording that just identified herself as Tony Hotzel. If she denies that, why, it's unbelievable. Do you have a question again, please? Even though she identifies herself during the taped phone conversation, Tony Hotzel still won't admit it's her voice. Did you hear the female voice on the tape identify itself as Tony Hotzel? Yes. Was that you? And that angers a man who spent almost 40 years of his life at State Farm. Richard Alberg retired in 1989 from his position as vice president for claims. We instructed people to tell the truth. 
especially when they're under oath. And if we did something wrong, okay, we'd take care of it. But this is obviously a, a disaster, and I'm embarrassed by it. I don't know which one was tonight. I wasn't there. I'm not sitting in Tony Hotzel's persona, and I'm not about to criticize her. In my experience, State Farm witnesses are honest and forthright. But the Hotzel performance goes on and on. Hours pass, and the plaintiff's lawyer can't get past the basic questions, such as the address of the office where Hotzel worked. I asked, where did you go? I'm asking destination. Where did you go when you went to one of those offices? I'm sorry. The first office I worked in was a big building. Hotzel couldn't or wouldn't give the address, so the attorney asked what route she took to the um, office. I remember driving on the 101. But she couldn't remember the exit she took. I guess we can assume she never got to the office. Unbelievable. We tried to interview the man who holds Richard Auberg's position at State Farm now or any other executive about the Hotzel deposition. The company refused and sent us this pre-taped comment. You know, State Farm, no matter what some of our critics might say, is the insurance company chosen repeatedly by more American drivers and homeowners than any other company. We think they choose us because we're fair and honest. But our investigation is not finished yet. Tomorrow on Channel 7 News at 6, you'll see an internal State Farm videotape teaching employees how to destroy documents that could be damaging in future bad faith lawsuits. You can hear more of our investigation with Susan Kennedy and her Spotlight 810 reports on KGO Radio tomorrow morning at 6.15 and at 8.15. And if you have an idea for our next investigation, call us toll-free at 1-888-40-I-TEAM, 24 hours a day. Dan Terrell. That really was something, watching that deposition yeah, there. Yeah. Now, Tony Hotzel, you tried to interview her. How did that go? We called her several times uh, saying that this was a very important part of our series. Mm -hmm. She refused to comment to us. And by the way, she is an attorney herself. She's a lawyer. Uh, while working, that's right, while working for State Farm. Um, she has now left the company. She's off on her own now. But uh, even though she's left the company, she still didn't feel comfortable enough talking to us. Interesting. All right, yeah. well, we're looking forward to it. More tomorrow, part. right. Thanks. Thank you.